Now, wait a minute. This happens to men all the time with paternity fraud. I don't feel sorry for her. Yes, yes, yes. My MABW team, you know I had to come to you to bring you this vital message because I'm thinking that people think that us men supposed to care about this article. In all, in all reality, some men may care. Me personally, I don't. I told y'all why in the beginning. This lady named Christina right here, an international realtor from Bergen County, New Jersey, is suing her ex-boyfriend, Rob Harris, alleging he conned her out of more than $70,000. He has not responded to her suit. He was my perfect match. This is what she's stating. Then he swindled me out of $71,000, my life savings. I'm suing him for fraud. When I matched on Hinge with Rob Harris, a blonde hair, blue eyed 30 year old real estate agent who worked at Real Brokerage last a April, he love bombed me. Pretty much meaning he ghosted her after he got 71 racks. He was a real estate agent from New Jersey, like me. He was very funny, witty, cracked jokes. He was lighthearted, a family guy who loved dogs, charming and entrepreneurial. His prop that got me to message him on Hinge was, I'll fall in love with you if you make me laugh. So you decided to hit a man on this website for dating. And just because he stated to you that he'll fall in love with you if you make him laugh, you thought you would win him over. You women believe anything. You women literally believe anything that these men say. No matter how much your boy MABW tries to help you and say that sometimes guys might slide into your DM or they might charm you in certain ways, guys over the internet, y'all really believe them. How interesting. Y'all don't learn anything though. Let's keep going with the DM message. The chemistry was instant and eventually we talked about moving to Miami and putting an offer on a condo. We were talking all day nonstop about our jobs in real estate, about silly, nostalgic things like SpongeBob. I looked him up to make sure he was a real estate agent. That checked out. He told me personal thing about his life. He said a few girls I was talking to were taken aback by this, but I need to tell you about a year ago. I was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy, a thickened heart wall. Just so you know, some days I'm able to go, I'm able to get up and go. And other days I'm exhausted. This is what he is telling her. I could be sitting still and my heart is pumping at 150 beats per minute. As according to him, stating to her. My grandmother had something similar. I wasn't going to write him off of, uh, because of a heart issue. He was helping pay his mom's mortgage. And take care of things for his family because his stepdad was having a serious back surgery, he told me. I thought that's really honorable. He stepped up to the plate as the other man in the family. We set a time to meet. He was going to drive me into the city. Then at 7 p.m. that night, I got an audio message saying, Christina, I'm really sorry. Something is going on at the hospital. I need to make sure my stepdad is okay. I'm really sorry. I do see a future here. Please don't be mad. She stated, I can't be the a-hole and get mad at that. I also had compassion for him in his situation because my mother had breast cancer, kidney cancer, bone marrow cancer, all of in a span of three years. I had to make a lot of concessions in my life. It was easy for us to connect on that level. So they were pretty much going to do the same thing. So she connected with him easier because of his so-called sob story. He was sending me NYU Langone sites about the surgery. Everything he was saying was checking out. According to him, at least, or according to her. In May, we finally went out on our first date. When we met, he opened the car door of his Tesla Model 3 for me. I thought, what a gentleman. Chivalry. We went to catch steak in Chelsea. He was a very nice dresser, wearing a black t-shirt, gray jeans with a designer watch. Ooh. The designer watch, the way to these women's heart out here. Guys, just wear a designer watch and you can have her. 
He came off as very sweet, nurturing guy. When I met him in person, I was like, he's not just good on the phone, over text. He's handsome, and we have good conversation. On the day, he said that he planned to move to Florida in October. And if this goes anywhere, is that something you're open to? I said it's funny because I have family down there, from what she stated. My best friend is down there. I go back and forth. And it is. I was in the process of getting a Florida real estate license. I was like, yeah, this this is synchronicity. Our first kiss was electric. We talked until 3 a.m. that night. He sent me an audio message that said, I think I met the love of my life. <laughs> the next month, he invited me to his friend's birthday dinner. We were approaching the place and he said, I don't want to go. I just want to spend the time with you. I haven't seen you. We were right in front of the restaurant. I thought it was a little weird, but we went out for dinner, blocked from the place. He didn't want any pictures on social media because he said he wanted to keep our life private. When too many people know about your business, it ruins the good things. Y'all soaking this up yet? Do y'all see where this guy is going at with her? Okay, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. On August 10th, he asked me to Venmo him $500. That's the start, ladies. And guys, if that female you're talking to automatically starts asking you to send her money over or some big amounts of money, beware. That's the first sign. Shortly after, we went to Miami where we stayed at, a, at the W Hotel in Brickwell. We were both applying for our Florida real estate license. He told me we're going to have a future together. He was putting in an offer on a condo in Aventura, Florida. And he told me he stayed in Miami to work on building his real estate network. On August 21st, he asked me for $1,300 to pay for a yacht charter and a restaurant to help him build a real estate network in Miami, which isn't out of the order, uh, which isn't out of the ordinary to spend on marketing. He told me he didn't want to show the lender how much he was spending while he was making the offer on the Miami condo. And she believed him. She said it added up, which added up. Then he asked me for $5,000 for Airbnb and he would pay me back. He even sent me his bank statement showing $720,000. He promised to give me $10,000 in cash the next time we saw each other. I was getting nervous because my savings started to dwindle. Then he drops a bombshell on me saying he owned a house with an ex-girlfriend. When they broke up, things got really hairy and at one point the police were called. He said, and she was going to press charges, and he showed her the text saying that. Then an hour before I was supposed to leave to fly down to Florida, I get a text from him saying, Houston, we have a problem. He doesn't answer the phone. I'm texting him nonstop. He sends me this long text saying, apparently this thing with an ex was never cleared up, and they arrested me. I said, why do you still have your phone? What do I do? He said he needed bail. He asked me for $12,000. I wired him the money. So gullible. It turns out he was never arrested and the money went to the Airbnb. I went to the police department in October. They said basically what you have is credit card fraud. When I tried to serve him court docs, I found out he had been living with another girl in New Jersey the whole time. She said he moved to Miami. And more, I, She said I'm more cautious these days when it comes to dating. I'm single and haven't been active on Hinge since. This experience, I'm meeting people organically or through friends. Duh, that's what you should be doing. You should always meet people organically and not on these back page sites. I don't understand why people trust people that slide up into their DMs or women go out looking for men on these websites. And then when you get got or some of you guys out there get lined up, you can't ask yourself why. You can't. It's better to meet people organically out and about. Get their number, talk to them for a while, get to know them. And then before y'all really start possibly sending each other money, you actually know what this person does all the way around because maybe y'all been dating or talking for about a year and you can really possibly trust that person. Y'all be meeting on these hen sites, these Tinder sites, Facebook. Y'all be meeting all over the place, some of y'all, on these websites. And y'all be just trusting anybody. Now, let me get into what I wanted to say. I don't feel sorry for her. I really don't. And I honestly think that the law shouldn't do anything about it. Ask your boy M-A-B-W-Y. 
Because this goes on all the time with guys, with guys with paternity fraud. Remember, guys, the woman can say that a kid is ours and we end up paying that lady child support for 18 years. Then it could possibly turn out that the child wasn't even yours and the court system does nothing about it. That woman won't be arrested for fraud. Can any guy out there agree with me? Can any guy out there agree with me? Or should we feel sorry for her for getting got for 70 bands? Guys get got every day through the court system. Every single day. And there's no pity for us. There's no sorrow for us. So I just come here to say I have no sorrow for her. Be careful about who you meet and on these back paid sites. And on these dating sites. Because for the most part, it'll never end up well. Anyways, that's my video for today. If you like the video, of course, comment, like, and subscribe. It ain't costing you a damn thing. And of course, I'm going to holler back at y'all later. Peace.